Let's go to Daniel, the eighth chapter of the book of Daniel. We're at the seventh, seventh chapter, so we're in the eighth chapter. Where did Cretius drop off with you all? The seventh chapter, eighth chapter. Sixth chapter, don't we? In the sixth chapter. Every, everybody have their pen and have their paperwork. Oh, what happened to our pen? Some all out. Y'all didn't. Yep. Now, it, well, it's your fault then. I told you about leaving your stuff. Mm -hmm, you took out the wrong stuff. Well, ain't my problem. Yes. All right. Let's pray. Go back to uh, Africa, Mika. Let's begin here. All right, we, we want to go to the um, we want to go to the the uh, sixth chapter, sixth chapter of Daniel, sixth chapter of Daniel. Um, we're actually still uh, with the part of prophecy. We're still with the part of uh, not prophecy but history. You know, you have history, and then you have when we release from history, we go to prophecy. Yes, ma'am. Delta Shazer. The arm is seen is actually, yeah, the, the arm represents the, the arm of God. That's the arm of God. So the uh, arm of God, the power of God, of how uh, no one could have seen that but him, but himself. So God is letting us know that his power of revealing to the enemy or to those that come against him, he has a way of communicating with them uh, because none of the, uh, none of those that, that was actually uh, using uh, necromancy or those that was actually using other things, uh, the enchanters, the witches or the warlocks or the uh, other activities that's been communicating with spirits, their spirits does, does not affect them as great as the spirit of God affect them. So he's letting us know that he, he actually has a way of communicating with people that they, that they fail to realize. And we should understand that there, there, um, there are battles that we should not enter into, we have to know basically what is of God versus what is not of God. Let's go, let's, let's go to the fifth chapter. We're going to take you back to the fifth chapter. Start the fifth chapter, we'll go to the first verse. Fifth chapter, first verse. Now the opening of this verse in the fifth reveals that the uh, a thousand Babylonian nobles had been assembled for this great feast. And so God knew exactly what was going on. All of this is showing you the test of the men and women of God as far as them obeying God in spite of being fearful 
of those that were not uh, giving him reverence. So here it says, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Now, now remember, Belshazzar was actually the, the son uh, of Nebuchadnezzar. And so after Nebuchadnezzar, after Nebuchadnezzar had died off, he got his right life right with God. But he died off, and after he died, then his son came in and took, take over, took over. So it says in the second verse, you have the second verse, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Now, never before, <clears throat> never before did any of the other uh, men and women that was the king took the things that, uh, especially when they confiscated it belonged to God, they never took it and used the things that were sacrificed to God, that were set aside for God. It's almost the same thing we have uh, different areas in the house to where we uh, set aside, we consider that as a place to where no one should enter unless we invite them in. It, we consider our own sacred area that is to be respected. So when it's not respected, then it causes anger or either causes a harsh speech to come to whoever went in. Then I tell you, not you, you got no business in there. Come out, all right? They come out, then they go back in there. So whatever you tell, get out of my house. I want you in my house. You know, someone is just uh, being defiant. All right, same thing with God. It's particular things that uh, that's only for the leaders or either for the shepherd that nobody else should touch. It's almost like when God had sacred things, the only person that could take, touch those things was the priest. And so when different one without the, without the okay of God, without God giving the unction to do it, they've crossed the line because they're not fit for it. And it's the same thing that uh, David did when he went and ate of the showbread and ate of the other bread without having the priest to do it. God didn't have permission, and Jesus did the same thing. And so uh, they were upset because they knew that these things were dedicated to God. Remember, anything that's dedicated to God is dedicated to God, and we should not allow nobody else, even ourselves, have to be careful. It's even a bottle of oil if you get in it dedicated for a certain uh, specific thing. Nobody is to touch it. Nobody is to handle it but the person that has been assigned to it. And so when they do that, then they cause, um, they cause not dysfunctionalism, but it causes a problem with the one that gave the order. All right. So the third verse says, then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone. Now, here it is now. They're taking God's stuff, all the stuff that God, they didn't use that stuff. It's mine. It's in the kingdom. My daddy had it set aside, not knowing why the daddy had it set aside, but they're going to take it for their own convenience. In that same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. The king saw the hand. So whoever orchestrated is the one that God actually begins to mess with. Here it is, Belshazzar. He gives the order of gold and silver and taken from the temple of Jerusalem and use them to drink their, uh, to their God. This was particularly an act of blasphemy against the true God. This was particularly an act of blasphemy of uh, the true God, and this was probably the first time that they had been uh, so used. So scripture record, as they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold, of silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. 
So they became intoxicated to where they began to give reference to everything but the God that created those things. And so this is where we get ourselves in, pro in, in trouble with God. And God said, I have no other God before me. And he lets us know that anytime we set a God and head a God, we get ourselves in trouble. Throughout the history of the Bible, throughout the history of the Bible, we're always in trouble is because we walk away and give God's time to everything but God. God said, I want the first of, and this is how the church is in trouble with God. The church folk, uh, uh, people say, you know, I'm a believer uh, uh, of, of God, but we give everything first to everything else but God. So we, be, we actually, we're, in some ways, we're actually blaspheming. Yes. You're saying one thing with God, and then you turn around and change and say, well, I'm showing with my actions, it's not true. And so we cause hardship. Uh, there's a scripture we've heard it said, God will not put no more on us that we can bear. It's, it's, it, we consider it as jawbone, but in scripture it breaks it down. There are a lot of things that we're going through that we're adding to ourselves. It's, it's not God. We're adding much more on ourselves and becoming more heavily burdened because of us not attending to what God has given us to do. Now, he says they drank wine and praised the God of the God of uh, silver, God, uh, God of, gods of, of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of the stone. I, I want you all to read that again. It's because it's saying something. I want you to see if you see what I see. So just, so just think about it. Think about it. Read, read it again. What, what did it say? They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass, of wood and of stone. Iron and of stone. What is that, what is that saying? What is that actually saying to you? The makers. The makers, those that was actually able to carve those things out, that's who they were worshiping. It says again, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. So all the ones that actually cut those things out, and to bring them out in the way that they brought them out, this is what they was concerned about. God says, I don't care what you do with a gift. Becky, Sister Becky, Sister Becky, give her. Yeah, thank you. You fail to realize that anytime we take the glory from God and give it to somebody else, I don't care how good I may preach, I don't care how good I may teach, I don't care how good I may sing. I don't care how good I may do anything. You can give reverence to me. You can give thanks to me, but you give reverence and glory to God that gave me the gift. And so now we are teaching you not to worship the gift, the gift, the one that actually using the gift. You actually give glory to the one that gave the gift to the one that's being used. I don't care how smart you are, how intelligent you are, just because you are a creator doesn't mean that you are creative. So we have to understand this very clear. So they begin to worship all of these men as gods because of the, uh, uh, of the work, how they fashioned the cups and how they made all the different things that they were actually using. So it says, in the same hour came forth fingers of a, of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. The king saw the part of the hand that wrote. All right, what is the part of the hand that the king saw?
All right? So it's letting you know this is being written by God, not by man. This is being written by God and not by man. You talk about the fingers of God or the hand of God. The hand of God have fingers on it and, 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 and figures of speech. But really, God does not have to use his feet. He does not have to use his hands. He doesn't have to use anything. Only thing God can do, God can take and look at you and just whatever he says in the spirit, it takes place. So this is just gives us a physical analysis of the spiritual perception. So he says here that uh, this supernatural appearance at such a might will be regarded as an expression of the displeasure of God of the Hebrews at the discretion of the vessels of his temple. We are the vessels in the temple of God. We are the vessels in the temple of God. Temple of God. And then when people begin to abuse and misuse the vessel, you see how we get ourselves in trouble by messing with the vessels that God has established? We cause the handwriting on the wall. So in your sleep, in your time of rest, God will disturb you. He will shake you. Might show you somebody else, but it's pertaining to you. It's because you cross that, you, you're abusing and mishandling the vessels of God. We are considered as vessels of honor because it was God that called us out. It was God that anointed us. In other words, allowed you to be smeared with oil in the position that you're actually holding. And so it is dangerous for anybody else is to mess with you other than the ones that was assigned to you. This is how a lot of people are in trouble with God. Yes. So we have to understand that the, the word of God is very plain. In, in other countries, you go to other countries, when they have their idols, uh, 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 the things that they consider as precious, you will die if you mess with those things. Or either some of the, um, some of the Egyptians, when they disturb those tombs, those tombs have curses on them. For anybody that mess with the tombs. And so when they cross that line, they release different plagues upon the people. And this is how a lot of people have died. Some archaeologists do, don't even fool with the tombs. But you have some people that are very intrepid. And, and, but you must understand this. Understand this here. And this is very powerful if you see what God is saying. Anytime the archaeologist finds something of old and then say, it's never taken to an individual's house. It has to go to a museum. Set aside where nobody can actually physically handle it is because the all or the spirit from your hand will contaminate it and actually corrupt it. This is why we have to look at the natural. We have to see the spiritual perception in this. All right, let's go to the sixth verse. So he says here, then the king's countenance, the king's countenance was changed. Why did God mess with his countenance? Why did God mess with his countenance? He's a king. Why did God mess with his countenance? Because all the eyes was on the king. Whatever they're doing, it was pleasing. Whatever they did, they looked at the king for his pleasure, that he was in agreement with it. So now since all the eyes are on the king, so God says, everybody that's looking at the king, everybody's going to see his expression. When his countenance fall, what it does, it shakes the whole house and what happens? Everybody's quiet because the king is to be kept in a moment to where he's full of laughter. You cannot grieve the king. You grieve the king, then his wrath comes upon you. Isn't, isn't that amazing? And so... He says, and his thoughts troubled him. He's trying to figure it out. When we can't calculate, when we can't sum up things that actually hit our mind, it troubles us. You're trying to figure that thing out. You're trying to grasp what is the meaning of this. How many of you ever had a, a dream that, was, that actually shook you? Because you could not interpret it. And then... It depends on what it was. You're even afraid to go and tell somebody about it is because 
is really not not is, is really not good. It can be degrading. <laughs> you know, I mean, people going around telling people about to wear dreams. It can shake you. But you have to understand that there are things that God do to us and reveal to us in a private matter, especially if you're the king or you're the head and you're causing people to walk away from God. There's a problem. All right. So he says, so he says here is that then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees smote one against another. I, I guarantee none of us have been in here that has been in that situation. I've been in a similar situation when God revealed something to me and I was too scared to go to sleep. I was too scared to move. I was too scared to do anything because I did not understand it. And I was troubled in my mind because I was trying to figure it out. And, you know, I, I go to my mother and tell my mother, I had this dream and I get, a, get away from me. I don't, want, I don't need to know that. That's even more disturbing. Or either you tell the dream and then nobody can interpret it, then you're upset because you done told somebody the dream and they couldn't interpret your dream. Now you're upset because this thing bothered you. So God has a way of shaking us. He has a way of troubling us by way of dreams. Yes. Because those, because those that was in the house, all of them that was drinking and carrying on, even though they couldn't see the, the hand of God, but they were looking at the expression on the king's face. So they knew something was up, but they didn't know what was going on. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. If I walk in here, when the contents on my face are changed, all of you are watching me. Then you try to figure out what's going on with Bishop. What's the problem? It's a natural thing. Even if you go home and, and, and mom or dad is, is not in a happy mode, you ease in the house, then you're too scared to do anything because you're trying to figure out, uh-oh, who done did what? Or either you let them see, go outside and, and start getting some switches. Then you start, who done, who done did? <laughs> you, start, you start checking stuff. Did I wash the dishes? Did I put up my clothes? Did I clean my room? Did I do my homework? You start going through, uh, uh, you, you start going through your life matters. And so this is what's happening today. People, not many people, not many preachers are being now antagonized by the dreams from God. God don't always speak to us physically. He doesn't always use me or somebody else. Sometimes it's personal because it's between you and God. But if you don't do anything about it, then he says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, word shall be established. Then he allows somebody else, and then he sent it by way of the teaching or expression from the word. All right, seventh verse. Beg your pardon? Yes. It came to point, he was so terrified that he was so terrified that every <laughs> he was he was shaken up. <laughs> he, he was, I do the best I can to kind of keep it as clean as we can, you, you know. <laughs> so it, it you know it it, it it really messed him up. And, and so it, it's saying also in the private parts of his life, it really shook him. It really shook him in the private. Part. There are private parts of our life that is not exposed, but you know when something is going on with your private parts. And so there are private parts that God has in us. And so a lot of times you have to touch those private parts. All right. So he says here, then the king cried out, cried aloud. To bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. What do you see going on with him that you saw before? Same thing to his father. Same thing. 
if God does me that way, he'll do you that way. If he do you that way, he can do me that way if I'm going in the way that you've gone. There's no difference. But people are in denial today. People are in denial today. They don't want to hear from God. Why? The king didn't call upon the priest. The king did not call upon the prophet. The first thing he did was call on the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation. He says, Be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck. Sound like thugs. And shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. The third ruler. So you had you had the you had the the um you had the king, you had the governor, and then you had the mayor. That's the third. The king, the governor, and the mayor. The mayor is under the governor. The governor is under the king. The king is under God. That's how it wrote. So he says, Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. So now you have people that are very intellectual. They're very intelligent. Intelligent people don't see what God is saying. They only read black and white. They don't fool with mystical stuff. This is what's happening in ministries. They're actually getting intelligent people. As Paul said to Apollos, my speech and my teaching were not enticing words of man's wisdom. So everybody wants a leader as influence in the world. The governors and the mayors and, and the president look up to them. That's past now. They don't look up to God. They look up to themselves as gods. They don't ask the true prophets. They only mess around with the false prophets. Anytime that a, a prophet, a man of God, a woman of God, a child of God can be bought, then you're no longer God. And this is what's happening to a lot of people that are getting into politics. They're selling themselves out. Not all, but quite a few, they're selling themselves out. So they say, well, if you're not with us, what we do, we'll silence you. You have no say so in this matter. It's the only thing you are is just a paycheck. So now we, we look at similar situations that the history of what we're reading now is leading us up to today what's taking place in now time. The leaders are now getting into witchcraft. They're getting into astrologers and soothsayers, buying candles and using all other type of incense and various things said, I prayed over this stuff and this stuff, you can use it, and God will work through this. And then they turn around and use scripture. We have to be careful. Olive oil is good because God said the reason it's so powerful is that it has to be pressed out. It has to be under pressure before the oil can flow. So just think about us. <laughs> we can only flow and really do what God has called us to do when we're under pressure. When we're, not under, when we're not under pressure, we're no good. So it's good at times to be under pressure. Y'all need to hear what God is saying. As Rini said, trouble don't last our way. He tells us, weeping may endure by the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
He said, if you're going to be his disciple, you need to take up your cross daily and follow him. He said, if you're going to live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. There's no way that you can be a true child of God and cannot stand being persecuted, cannot stand being ridiculed, cannot stand being talked about, cannot stand being tore down. At least you're making a sound, clear statement to God. Yet though they slay me, I'm going to trust in you. For the battle is not mine, it's yours. What, what, what am I getting out of this, God? I'm going through this. You, you didn't pray, you didn't pray, and God has not brought you out of it. So it means that I want you to go through this. I don't care what it is. I want you to go through this. You're going to find out who you are and where you are. You're going to find who I am and where I am in this situation. Sometimes our situation is the making of us. Amen. This was going to be the making. The same thing that happened to uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar, the same thing taking place with Belshazzar. He's falling in the footsteps. We do not want to give God the do not want to give God the glory and always complaining this and that. That's one of the tactics of the enemy. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care what group you're going to be with. You're going to see trouble. Amen. But if you're a runner every time you see trouble, then God did not assign you. Right. God did not call you. Ooh. Did you not know if you continue to read, what happened to Jonah at the end of Jonah's life? What happened to Jonah? What did, did Jonah rest in the arms of God? Jonah died with unforgiveness in his heart. Read the word. He was still upset with God. Because he was mad at God because God forgave. <laughs> you done mess with my family and did all kind of things to my mm -hmm. family. Then God, you're going to turn around and give them a chance. Right. You're not fair. Yeah. How many times have you told God in your situation Amen. that you're not fair? That he's all not right. fair. Come on, be honest. Y'all right. ain't here to yeah. sit up here. Yeah. You're supposed to be yeah. children yeah. of God. Yes. Confession yes. is good for your soul. Yes. Because it didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen. Because somebody said, I serve it right now, God, and you prayed and didn't say. And then when you said, well, you letting them go. I've been there and done that. I used to be yes. on Bishop Jace. Yes. I used to be on all of the, uh, all the TV evangelists because I met them. Uh -huh. And I, God let me see and allowed me to be among them. And I'm like, how are they going to get away with it? And I can't get away with nothing. Have you ever felt like that? Yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. God is still God. Amen. What you're going through is going to benefit you. Yeah. And it's going to help others. Amen. Because now you have some history behind you. All right. Yes, ma'am. So, Bishop, when he, um, when he called the astrologers, the wise men, and all of them, then they, that caused competition to see who could interpret just for, say, the king's dream so that not, they could have the higher. Not really. I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Why would I have you in the position and now I need you and you can't interpret it? So now you are being jeopardized. If you say you're a lawyer, then I chose you to be my defendant, to defend me. If you can't defend me, then I'm going to tell everybody else you ain't no good. <laughs> you don't have a record. How many cases have you won? It depends on, you know, when they're in their own right. You have to see this. When they're in their own right. When they're in their own right. They only came together collectively is to figure it out because they were all in the same bag. Try to figure this thing out. What does the king, what does the king want? Because he, he put a decree out on all of us. So while we're, comp while we're in competition trying to find, no, 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 no. We must bring it here because... If you don't get it right, I don't get it right, and they don't get it right, then we're all going to die. If you get it right, then somebody's going to save our lives. 
And so it's the same thing that we say in the church. God don't fight God, so what's wrong with the saints fighting one another? I, I, I stand on that today. I stand on it very strongly. If you read the same Bible that I'm reading, why is so much conspiracy among each other? You look at the fault, then you find it in them, and now you're complaining about it. What have you asked God? What is it that I can do to assist or to help pull this person out? Because you have to think, when I get in my situation, I guarantee you're going to get in the situation. Who's going to help you out? Then some of the stuff we get in is too embarrassing to let everybody else know. Right. <laughs> no. I tell people all the time, you might not do stuff physically, but your mental part, you're just as guilty as I am in the physical. Isn't that amazing how we as the people of God are in competition? Church is in competition. For what? It, that doesn't impress God. Me quoting scriptures and, 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 and being able to shake myself and then the anointing, the power of God following me. Who, who's that? Ex don't get it twisted. You have to, you, you have to look at these things. And, 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 and no, it's because I don't want to be a judge over the matters of God. He allows us to be a judge over the matters of men, but not a judge over the matters of God. How can you judge God? But we actually have. We brought God into counsel and judged him. Oh, how many times did you sit down and talk about somebody with God and say, yeah, I remember the time God wouldn't do so and so on. You got God is in your court. And so you're judging him. He wrong for that. No, I ain't chasing. I ain't doing nothing. I'm going to walk by God. Ain't, you ain't judging. He ain't right. <laughs> and people are walking away from from God and say, I'll serve myself. Stupid and dumb, two or three times. All right. He said, then came all the wise, the, all the king wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. It, it, you know, it, it's just like when, when I saw on, on Facebook, and at least he was honest, is that uh, Noel Jones was telling his people he was talking to his people, and, and this one prophet that was coming on and was always talking about prosperity and pie in the sky and just preaching prosperity. And so Noel Jones said, my people came to me. He began to cry, and he said, I feel real awful. I'm preaching and teaching, but yet still I did not warn the people about the COVID that was coming. And he said, I feel bad because I let my people down. So now I have to go back and reconcile. I have to go back. And think about, am I, what am I preaching to and what am I preaching for if I'm just preaching stuff is to cause you to shout and give me recognition. But here it is, what's coming up on us, we can't see it, and then we all fall into the bag. And the people say, all right, you're hearing from God. Why didn't he tell you that something was coming? This is what people are following. They're following people that does not have a relationship with God. They're not seeing. They only see what the people want them to see. And that is nothing but prosperity. And you know, I've come against prosperity preaching is because I found out. If you're giving your tithes and your offering and giving your time to, the, to God, you don't have to worry about buying no gimmicks. And then the first thing to use, uh, the first thing to use is, well, Solomon was a rich man. He was a king. You're not a king. You're not a king. How are you going to use that? David, same thing, he was a king. He was a man after God's own heart. God permitted him to have concubines and have all, those were kings, but the man of God cannot have all the concubines. And right. It's totally different. So we have to understand the principles of God and how God utilized us because he was the one that put us in the position is because as we're reading today, who are you going to speak to 
when they said a handwriting was on the wall and I went to everybody that I thought that was intelligent and they could not give me the revelation of it. Who you gonna go to? Wow. So he says in the ninth verse, then was the king Belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords came into the banquet house and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Here it is. Even the queen respected the king. O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed. Here it is now. We look at the season. For right now, it's the women's season. How are you going to utilize the season to where now women are more coming up in power? How are you going to, are you going to use it for, utilize it for your own prestige? Or are you going to utilize utilize the opportunity that God has given you for the glory and honor of God instead of for yourself. So here it is now. His queen comes in. Well, don't even be troubled. That's your cheerleader. Your help me. Don't even be troubled. There is a man. He said, there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. The holy gods. In the kingdom of the holy gods. Talking about small people that he ministers to. That he's keeping them in their place. And they respect him. He says, and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom, like wisdom of God was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king. I say thy father made master of magicians, astrologers, and Chaldeans, and soothsayers. So she said in the 12th verse, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of heart sentence and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel. So somewhere in her youthful time before she became the queen to the king, Belshazzar, she had to be somewhere around of the father on the side because she had to be fine. She had to be bow-legged. She had to have a, a, a donkey on her. She had to have something. <laughs> had to have something on them to qualify her. As far, all king, kings didn't have no ugly women. They had the best they had the best thing. God have all the ugly people. <laughs> he can work with ugly people. David was ruddy. <laughs> he, he, don't, he don't choose all fine. He don't choose all fine people. You know, he don't, he don't choose all buck men. He don't choose all them walking around bow legged. You know, we love bow legged men. That government like them lasers turn me on. Look at it. Look at it. I ain't walk. Then he turned around and see if he got a butt on him. Yeah, yes, Lord. That's the king. God said, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want anything that's going to take glory from me. And look how you go out. You go out and get the best thing that takes the glory from God. All because of how it look. So he says, he says, now let Daniel be called. And he will show thee the interpretation. Do you not know God still have people that refuse to worship him that's on the sideline on the sideline that's not in a high position a position but yet still they honor the man of God Let's just step keep going around the city and see you know, Mr. Brown I need to talk to you what's it called When all the killing was going on what 10 15 years ago when some of the other people was, was downtown. So they had me down there and I told them, I said, you know what the problem is? I said, you want to solve the problem? I can tell you what the problem is. What's the problem? I said, you're going into demonic activity, spiritual warfare. Certain parts of the city, demon spirits control it. 
I wish I could believe that. I said, you have some problems. I can tell you the truth. And he's supposed to be a churchgoer. He's supposed to solve crimes, not mysteries. I solve mysteries. Men of God, the women of God, the children of God solve mysteries. We don't solve crimes. Now, now, now there's been Mr. Jake, y'all. I know that's right. There's been Joyce Myers, you've been rolling over. We're not crime stoppers. We're mystery solvers. As the people of God, we solve mysteries. And this is what the enemy don't like. Mystery solvers. Isn't it something? Write that down. Huh? I'll probably forget that. Yeah, tape, so, that's okay. so, so just think. Just, just think. So this is her testimony. She said, I have even heard of thee that the spirit of God's in thee. And that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. Do you not know majority of, of men that have gone to theological seminaries, they really don't like using the Bible as far as parables because it's kind of weak. So they use hermeneutics. Hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is from the Greek god Hermes. His nudics are considered as his tactics, that how he draw people because of using natural things to a spiritual perception with clarity of understanding to draw the people to them. So they use the tactics of Hermes. That's when they call it hermeneutics. A lot of them don't look it up. I tell you and I encourage you, go look it up for yourself. Hermeneutics is good to be used, but you have to be careful with hermeneutics because it would strip you of your spiritual senses of God. So you, when you depend on Hermes nudics, Hermes, Hermes was a Greek god. A Greek god of using strategies or tactics is to grasp the imagination as well as the people with influence. That's the reason that we say all the time that Paul said, my speech and my teaching were not enticing words of man's wisdom. That's the purpose of hermeneutics. Get it. Read it yourself. Don't take my word. Get it and read it yourself. So he said, if I use hermeneutics, then I don't have to spend time waiting on God. Let me show you something. There is an evangelist. Preacher that comes on out of Texas every day. And he never used parables. He used little stories. Hermes knew. Never say this is what God revealed to me. It's always the book. Very seldom does he say, my father taught me this. And my father explained this to me. Very subtly. Mom and daddy, when you all were doing, you did it your way, I'm going to do it my way. A billionaire refused to mention Jesus' name. They have thousands, if not millions of worshipers. Because he said that I'm a person that God called to actually influence you. I am a motivator. I'm motivating them to serve Jesus Christ. I'm motivating them to serve just themselves. And just use God as a platform. Think about it. It's dangerous. 
Yes, ma'am. How do you spell hermeneutics? Hermes nudics. Her, is it her, Hermes? It's Hermes nudics. You got the paper. You can get. I, 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 I didn't give all of y'all the paper. I know you gave me it's the information. On gave you information on it. Speak to your phone. Your phone will look it up. I was just about to ask Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. See how you, you have information and don't even know how to use it. Siri, Hermes nudics. And Siri, pull it up. But, but you, must, you must understand, what, what is the purpose of being in a crowd or being around someone great? Just to say, I was with this person. I've had people come from great ministries and then use their name, said, this is my pastor, this is one. I said, how many times did you preach? How many times did you preach? How many times did he allow you to minister? You said, what, what did you teach him? I, I work with the choir. In the beginning was a word, not a song. You, you're a minister. You're preaching. How many times did he allow you to preach? You don't come in influencing me. How many times did he let you preach? Even though he didn't know what I know because it's taught in the larger ministries and even in some of the smaller ministries. You don't let the people that's under you preach on Sunday morning. That's just for you because of the outbreak break out and they leave. Then they're going to take the people with them. Well, it just let me know they wouldn't hear for God no way. And this is what people do. They influence other people is to leave to follow them and they're not doing anything because they're out of the will of God and don't even realize it. And even I had some to even start churches themselves. Now they see what they didn't see when they were with me. You want to take over, you want to, you can, now you're in that part of leadership and now you're facing the same things that I was telling you, what you were doing to me. I didn't watch their face. I don't know what I'm going to do to help you. How to, I've been through this so I can, I can I give you a hand. If not, then I would be showing unforgiveness. Now he's, he's over people. He's responsible. Did God start the ministry or did you start? Think about it. The king took over. And it's something that can be very dangerous. Do you know it is dangerous for a man to come into a ready-made family that's already been established and then he comes in and wants to reestablish? Almost impossible. You have to learn, you have to understand, you have to study the children that you can get favor in order to turn around. Nowadays, you know, <laughs> you used to with, with, you know, with, with some women, how you treat their children now, that's the right man for me. Nowadays, a little bit better than that. They, they, uh, that's a trick. I didn't heard the pastor talk about that, so that's a trick. He getting, trying to get my children to get to me. No. I'm, I'm ahead of that. What you with me for? Money? Influence? What? Tell, tell me why you want to be with me. What? All right. Let's go. Let's go back here. So it says now, <laughs> it says here in the 16th verse. Yes, sir. They call that necromancy. Okay, now what did the Chaldeans deal with? The Chaldeans were, they actually were, they the ones that dealt with dead, dead people. Okay. They were very strong in, in, in uh, witchcraft. Okay, witchcraft. Okay. Yes, they were very strong. And, and you, you don't hear too much about voodoo. Okay. But they were using that as well. Okay. Voodoo is not something that is new. It's been around for years. It's been around for centuries, but they didn't really know that much about it. And there's a true thing when you have people that's in voodoo, they do and can have dead people walking around. But it depends on the power of that individual. It depends on that power of that individual. So it comes to the point where they meditate on a lot of 
dead folk. That's when people get into the necromancy. They start uh, like the witch of Endure. When uh, Samuel had died and Saul needed directions from God, he went to the city called Endure. It's to actually find that witch that he ran out of the city when he was following the principles of God. And so he said, I need for you to call up. He disguised himself. And when she recognized him, she said, you're Saul. She became afraid of him because you're the one that ran me out. And now you come to me asking me is to call up what you told me I shouldn't call up. Fooling with the dead folk. The dead know not what the living is doing. So the Bible says when she began to do what Saul wanted him to do, then the Bible says that they begin to ascend, not descend. They didn't come down, but many of the Samuels. And then he said, why have you come to awaken me out of my sleep? How many of you want to hear dead, dead folk talk? It, it might seem comical, but it's, it's true. Saints of God have no reason, have no business visiting graves. But where did it come from? It came from Catholicism for those that needed to hear from their loved ones and the priests, the priests deceived them. They were the one that brought up the word purgatory. There's no such thing as purgatory. Purgatory is a place where they say, where your son or your daughter or your family member, you give me a certain amount of money and then we ask God to put them in purgatory. And when they come out of purgatory, purgatory is a place where they go and get cleansed and then they're released. Well, ask the rich man that died and in hell he lifted up his eyes. He never saw purgatory. He was trying to find out where purgatory was. So that was just to ease the mind of the people that were troubled because they failed to realize is that life in this life is not eternal. So he was deceiving them. And so now he passed on down the line. Think about how many of the patriarchs have found out where the graves of a lot of Sojourner Truth and some of the others that were buried. There were great warriors that helped lead people out of slavery. Where are their bodies? Matter of fact, where is Khrushchev's body? And, 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 and where is that other crazy one from Germany? Where's Hitler? They say his body's here. They really don't know exactly where he is. Well, the way he acted, I know why they can't find because he's in hell. Some people don't go to judgment. They go straight. And God didn't send him. He sent himself. The Bible says the rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment. So he explained to people being torment. It means tormented of the people that he abused. That's the tormenting. You're a true child of God and you cross that line, it torments the heck out of you. That's the spirit of conviction. That's tormented. Not too many saints are convicted lately. So, he said, now the wise men, astrologers, have brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. Now, I have heard of thee, that thou camest not, that canst make interpretation and dissolve doubts. Now, if thou canst, canst he says, read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof. Thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the king. This is the second time he said this. He said it to them, now he's saying it to Daniel, the influence. God said, listen here, whatever God has given me to give you to interpretation, I don't need your money. 
I don't need your gifts. This is free. This is free. He said, no, I don't, I, I don't need it. Now, he says, O king, O thou king, the most high God. 17, thank you. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to who? And give thy rewards to what? Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. Saints of God, we've got no business going around the astrologers, the soothsayers, and those that are actually getting their answer from demon worshipers. Private tea sections, tea parties. Come and go with me. I'm going to this place where they have about seven or eight prophets that sit down and they, you know, you leave an offering at this one and leave an offering at that one and they give you a word. That is not God. That is of man. And they're using the gift of God for their own purpose and they're really not prophesying to them. They're giving them words of knowledge. There's a difference between the word of knowledge and prophecy. Prophecy is according to what the word of God has said. This is what the word said. What we're reading you is prophecy. It is written. It cannot be erased. A word of knowledge is something that I can see in you. And by God allowing me, or by you allowing me. And then sometimes the devil can give you a word of knowledge. They tell you what you want to hear. Word of knowledge. God is going to give you a car. That's not prophecy. That's a word of knowledge. Hey, he prophesied to me. They said prophesied. They prophesied to me. Come go to this church. They prophesied. That's why when I first started out, because of what God was using me, People, all kind of gay people call. What does God show me? Well, God showed me now you ain't got no business being in the position that you're in. Bye. <laughs> True prophets tell the truth. They give you what is needed, not what you just want. And it doesn't make that individual, that him or her, perfect. That's what we do. We look for perfect prophets. None of them are. But we want to be obedient to God. God allows that to take place so we will not give man God's glory. Isn't it something everybody want to counsel somebody when they know they have a problem and they have need counseling? But God can use somebody like you or me that needs counseling but yet become a counselor to somebody else. And while you're counseling that individual, you're getting counsel at the same time. Yeah. 18. O oh, thy king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. O oh, thy king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, languages, trembled and feared before him, whom he would, whom he would slew, and whom he would keep alive, and whom he would whom he he would have set up, and whom he would have put down. He said, but when his heart was lifted up. I pray all the time that God keep me humble, keep me submissive, and most of all, keep me in a straight mind is that I'm not God. I'm just a messenger of God. I refuse to put myself upon a pedestal. I have a testimony. I have that. I have problems just like you. And some people, I don't want to hear nobody's problem. I need to hear from God. You hear from God because I'm letting you know I'm just like you. I have problems. God always used people with problems. He never used a person with no problems. Do you not know most of your drug counselors 
with drug addictions. They know how you think. They know what you feel because they've been there and done that. And so now they found out 12 steps don't work. It doesn't affect everybody. You know, you might have a few people use the 12 steps and, and you know, it, it, it helps them. That's, that's, that's something that they can actually see. But then there are those that's a little bit deeper than that. They need more than the 12 steps. They need the one step, the first step, and that is repent in order for them to be helped. They have to first say, I am an alcoholic. I am an adulteress. I am. You've got to admit, I've got a problem. A lot of the kings did not did not admit that they have a problem. So we as the people of God, we can't walk around with our head lifted up because we're, you know, I'm blessed. I'm better than blessed. I'm highly favored. Been saved all day, and no evil have I done. You lying rascal, sit down. It's your evil mind. Think you better than everybody else. Hat bigger than everybody else. Just because you have stilettos don't mean that you can. <laughs> don't mean that you that high. Take them off you. It's the same size I am. But sometimes people put the horse, the cart before the horse. Sometimes. We put more emphasis on what we have instead of what we got. I got Jesus. I might have a lot of stuff, but the most important thing to me is having God, having the Holy Spirit, having understanding, having him to be able to speak to me through whom he chooses. But he said, look at your father. Your father God allowed him. He gave him the power to when he said, he backed up what he said because he was an oracle of God. He was a tool of God that God used and he recognized that, but he got beside himself. When he had that dream. Think about it. Don't let your success get you in trouble. It's God that did it for you. Not because of you, because of the prayers of the saints. But his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride. And he was disposed from his kingly throne. And they took his glory from him. How did they take his glory from him? Read the 20th verse again. Sister Brown, man, I see you. Are you with us? Are you awakened? <laughs> oh, here it says. Thank you. Unmuzzle yourself. Thank you. Your book uh, starts Daniel 5, 17 through 21. All right, let's go to 17 to 21. We already, okay, let's go down. Read. Yeah. Uh, da Daniel disavowed any interest in the gift of positions offered him and assured Belshazzar. Hold, hold on, hold on. It's spoken the word of God. Don't let gifts blind you. And this is what sometimes people do to lead us. This is what sometimes people do to you as followers. They give you gifts, and now you're obligated to them. Was it from your head or from your heart? If it's from your heart, it means that you can still tell me that I'm wrong and that I need help and I need prayer or whatever it is. But if it's just for prestige, you're not going to say nothing. It's because I want you to keep giving me the gifts. So whatever you do, I'll glorify you. Think about it. Just because God said, I, I've given you gifts, Bishop is a gift to you. He's a gift to you with no price. Because you couldn't pay for him no way. Just think. Who can find a virtuous woman? A virtuous woman is priceless. You cannot put a price on stuff. Fine house. I don't care if you get a castle. I don't care if you get a mobile. There's no price. She's priceless. So why would you limit yourself to $20? $20 hookah. What does $20 
It won't even pay for a, 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 a et cetera. Think about it. How valued are you? How much are you really worth? What is the value of you? Wow. Wow. How much has the devil given you to where he has bought you? He did it to Jesus. Whatever he did to Jesus, he's going to do to us. He'll take us on the pinnacle and say, all this stuff that I have, I give to you if you but bow down to worship me. I want you as a child of God. It's to spit in God's face. But Jesus said this. He said, all that stuff ain't yours. That stuff is my dad's. Cat on a thousand hill belongs to him. So why should I have to bow down to you? You are a child of God. You should not be bought. Amen. You stand on the word of God. I don't care if it's mama or daddy. Says, you need to lead that church. That church ain't helping you. That church ain't doing nothing. How did I get from where I was to where I'm now? And you still where you were. Tell me something. If I'm in a cold house and you put some cover on me, I ain't let nobody take that cover off me because I don't like being chilly. <laughs> I'm going to respect the one that gave me, you, you know, you didn't have to give me the cover. But you gave it to me, not even for a price, because I was in your house. you in God's house and he's giving you the best cover, not the less cover. And that covering is responsible to keep you warm, to keep you safe. That's the purpose of cover. Why would you have cover at home and you still cold? Not unless you have a cold or you have the chills. I don't care how much they put on you. You got the chills. It's something about the body. You can be in the fire and still. <laughs> Reese, Sister Brown. I'll go back. Daniel disavowed any interest in the gifts or positions offered him and assured Belshazzar that he would read the writing. Daniel reminded Belshazzar, the Most High God gave your father, Nebuchadnezzar, sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Now, now this is sometimes you can say, you can say, Bishop, you, don't, don't quit. Don't bow down. Remember. Remember what you told us. Remember what God says. There's nothing too hard for God. God will bring you out. God's going to help you. What you're going through is only temporarily. He allowed me to see that you're human just like us. I'm a supporter of you. Because you supported me when I was down. When I was out. You didn't put your foot on my neck and kill me when I was at the most vulnerable point of my life. It goes both ways, right. not just right. one way. Amen. Read. Daniel pointed out how Nebuchadnezzar was an absolute ruler who would promote or demote as he wished. However, as Belshazzar already knew, Nebuchadnezzar had his period of insanity when he acted like one of the beasts. Ooh. Only when Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over the kingdoms of men wow. and sets over them anyone he wishes. All right. Until I have the right, the power that God has given me, I can put a monkey in charge or whatever. I can take a rat and say, I want this rat is to stay here until I tell it to move. I've got that position as long as I'm pleasing God. But let me turn away from God. You might under, not understand why I chose the rat, why I chose the monkey is to do what I chose it to do. Why did he put them in position? Isn't it something how we come? They ain't fit for that position. Are you fit for yours? What would you do? There's some situation we would say, if, I, if that was me, I'd do so and so and so. So God put you in some situation similar. Come on, bitch. 
and now you don't know what to do. But then he brings to your mind. Remember you said? <laughs> There's some things you can get into you don't know what to do. You have to get some advice. So I'll tell you, hey, give me some advice. What can we do is to help ministries to be better than what it is? Give me something new, not something that's old, not something that I've already, give me something fresh. How can we cause us to become better? What can we do? Isn't it something? The opportunity. What can we do is to help make ministry better? You're almost like the Chaldeans. Nobody said nothing. The thing is, if we all walk in the vocation where we were called and do as we were assigned to do and eat what's on our own plate instead of on everybody else's plate, if, we, if we're driving, if we keep our eyes on the road and stop being a tourist driving, then you wouldn't run into nobody and run off the road. Something that's similar. Just because you're, you're, you're a backseat driver, I can't see everything that you're looking at. Because I drive, I got to keep my eyes on the road. How many of you? you? You don't do it. How many of you? <laughs> Bam! You text and drive. I have to shut it off. Or either put it up there to where I can, you know, they make calls where you can push it to hello, you can talk while you drive. But you're trying to hang on to the phone and put it all on your ear while you're driving and stuff. And <laughs> what? Huh? What? See here? I'm, look, look at this here. I'm sending you a picture. Bam! Bam! This sometimes, this is what we're doing. People text your mind. They send a text to your mind. It's a spiritual thing. At church at time, we use witchcraft. Did you know that? Yes, we use witchcraft. And I didn't realize, you sitting this way, and here's you behind somebody, and you look at me. Look at me. Look at me. For some reason, they look <laughs> Mind over matter. Turn around and look at me. Look at me. Look. Or you just turn around and just keep staring. <laughs> and pretty soon, they in the video. Just <laughs> we don't even realize what we do. We because we seen grandmama. Hey, they tell you to touch somebody. Touch him. You know, touch him. And tell him, look, I'm going to whoop you when you get home. Then get back. Don't get mad at me. Your mama told me. I was sitting in church one time, and my mama told the lady, the mother in front of her, slapped me upside the head. She slapped me. Your mama told me to do it. <laughs> I'm going to get you when you get home. Think about it. Think about our situation. Read. That's the end of that one. It goes uh, in 540. Okay, so, but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed, disposed from the kingly throne and they took his glory from him. How did they take his glory from him? And they took his glory from him. How would you all interpret that? And they took his glory from him. Hmm? How did he, how did they take his glory from him? Let me, let me read again. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, 
He was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Took his glory from him. Let me, let me show you. Our glory is our mental way of thinking. Glory from him. The glory of the mind. Because of your uh, uh, ways of doing things, your creative ways of doing, when you're not in your right mind, you're no longer creative. You're in a lower state of mind. So what happened is pride was lifted up. And so God says, I know what I'll take from him. I'll take his glory from him, his mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we wouldn't say uh, spiritual beheading. We say now he's blindfolded. He's been put a blindfold over his head so he can't see. It's, it's closed within himself. And when you close within yourself, you can't see outside of yourself. So your glory is your mind. He took his mind from him and he took his glory. He took his glory because he was no longer worshipped. He was no longer considered as a great king because he could not lead the people that was with him. So, the 21st verse, and it says, and he was driven from the sons of men. He was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with dew of heaven. In other words, he didn't have no covering, no glory, no sensitive matter. He was considered now as a creature and not a creator, a creature. So he lived among the creatures. When you lose your place with God, the company that you keep is with now creatures. They become asses. They become beasts. They become wild like oxen. They're just out in the field grazing now because they're not used for any work. This is what it's saying. When your mind is taken from you, when God stripped you, he stripped you for a reason. I didn't understand. I lost everything but my mind. I lost everything but my children. My wife lost everything. He did that to humble me. He said, I'm going to take away all the crutches that you have because I called you and if I allow you to keep these things, you will not be successful in me. So he took stuff from me and he allowed me. He says, you will rely on me. God knows everybody in here. Ask yourself this question. Can you be trusted with more than what you have now? Be honest. You might as well say no. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, either. That's a different way to rep reprobate. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people fail to realize with this stuff that's going on now with man with man and woman with woman, it talks about that in Romans, the first chapter. Because they refuse to rename, re retain the knowledge of God, so God turned them over to a reprobate. You have people that are reprobates now. What they're doing, they think it's good. It's of God. It's sold into them. They don't even realize that it's not a disgrace. And then for other ministries to embrace it, 
they says, I'm right along with you. So now they're in a mental institution because they're all together. I remember my, my nephew driving a, a bus that, uh, that was actually uh, picking up people that had uh, mental problems and stuff. He said that they were you know, slow. And, and, and so <laughs> he's, he's driving the bus and didn't realize he start, that spirit got on him, so he started acting mentally. So he had to quit the job. It affected him. See, all jobs are not for everybody. Think about the job where you're working. Is it affecting you to where you're acting like them? That's something really to consider, people of God. God allow us to, certain ones to go through certain things so that can be the testimony so I don't have to go through it. We should be different from the world. And so what happened? Because Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar's father, did not want to be among the saints. He put him among the creatures. Your mind is the most valuable thing. And they tell us that the mind is more precious than anything. When you are not in your right mind, you really don't know what's going on. Alzheimer's. A lot of the others, it means dementia. It, it's, it's really not you. Something that actually happened and it's not a her inherited thing. It's not in the genes of the family. It's something that dramatically happened to the individual. And because of so much pressure and so much weight, then what happens, it affects the mind. Stress, depression can actually, it's exactly what happened to me. I was talking to someone the other day and I don't know why and how this individual had cancer. It's because stress and depression, what actually caused cancer is to start Getting out. Cancer was placed in us for a reason. It kills foreign stuff. But when it's overstressed and being fed more than what it's supposed to, then it kills everything that's in its sight. And do you not know? I want you to listen. And do you not know? Even in the hospital, when that individual died, that spirit says, I'm no longer in this house, I need a new house. And people fail to realize that spirit and you don't even know it. It's serious. That's the reason now whenever you go, they should have had this a long time ago. Wherever you go, they should have a deep, wash your hands. To wipe your hands and clean your hands. I carry a little bottle with me all the time. I'm always spraying. I try to Wash this brown hand like a squirt. You know, since he gave me too much, get it all wet, get it, get it, get it real good. It's very important. People fail to realize people can pass by you and spirits will fall off. Remember, we carry spirits, not a spirit. So he says here, he says in the 22nd verse, Right? And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. He said you knew it, and you felt like God wasn't going to do nothing to you, but you messed with God's vessels. But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drank wine in them. And thou hast praised the God of silver and of gold and of brass and iron, wood and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are always thou hast not glorified. We're going to stop right there and pick this back up on Wednesday. So he was letting them know. Think about it. Daniel was not in there. So he had to ask the question. 
what is going on? What's the problem? And so the king told him everything. I took the vessel, I brought this, and I brought that, and I could imagine him while he's saying, this don't look good. This is not good. And now you want me to interpret what the sign of the hand said. That was only what the king wanted to know. What was the sign of the hand and the fingers writing on the walls? And think about the language that he wrote it in. Chaldean language. Many, many. Tinkalistic. Many, many. Tinkle. Upstream. Man said, many men are tickle. Us. <laughs> me, me, tickle upstream. <laughs> Think about it. The handwriting on the wall. What was the significance and what was the purpose of it? For the king. If we get the king, we're going to get the people. If we get the people, we're going to get the king. It works both ways. Not all the time, but in the better half. We have to understand this, is that this is history. History repeats itself. How many of you all, did you get your papers that I gave you as far as uh, understanding history, the purpose of history? You all got it? Everybody got the purpose of history? You need to keep, the, keep those papers with uh that was to actually, actually give you the information on the purpose of history. History, history is behind you. History is never in front of you. History is behind you. Say, history is behind me. History is not before me. So you have to understand it. What we do in the past to our children, this is history. And so this reason he said, record this. I tell your children. God made sure this stuff was recorded because he knew that we are our children, his children, and your children before, or your generation is going to follow in the same footstep so they don't have to go through a lot of these things. That's the important part of history. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you again for what you revealed unto us. We thank you for taking us through this walk of Daniel. And Father, again, we just praise you because without you revealing to us with clarity and understanding, your Lord, the same of Hanaya, Michelle, and Azara, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, and yet they would not bow. Help us not to bow to the ignorance of those that have walked away from God, to the ignorance of those that don't see why God allows trouble to be in ministry, in nations. And Father, again, we just thank you and praise you. Because you said in your word, you will not give your glory to no one else. And Father, we just thank you. We continue to pray for the sick, the shut in, and those in the hour of bereavement. We ask for the care of those that will be traveling, dear Lord, to actually go, dear Lord, to take care of the personal business. And those, and perhaps, dear Lord, that are already gone and that would be on their way back, dear Lord, that you would give them safe travel in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and we thank you again for these, your people, and for those that have listened, that have heard what you said through us, because it is to us, because it is for us, because this thing is not over. Lord, we're seeing, dear Lord, what you're seeing in your word, to how the governors and the mayors and, and even those in, in leadership authority, how they're treating your people, dear Lord. But dear Lord, we ask that you help us to remain faithful, help us to remain confident, Help us to remain in trust, knowing that at the end we still win. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. All right, praise the Lord. See you Tuesday. Women's spiritual warfare class on Tuesday. Um, my class was last week. Yes, ma'am, it was last week. Stay tuned.